Hi guys, it's Brian at the Peace of Eden Homestead um, in the kitchen today and I thought I'd bring you guys along and show you how to make uh, zucchini pickles. Uh, this time of year there's almost more zucchini than we can keep up with coming out of the garden and one of my favorite ways to eat them is as pickles and if we lacto ferment some pickles then not only are they delicious but they're also good for our guts. So come on along and I'll show you how we do that. So this is the jar I'm planning to use to ferment these um, lacto-fermented zucchini pickles in. If you see here, it's got a lever top and then a rubber gasket around the top. Now when you're lacto-fermenting things, they create um, carbon dioxide as a uh, byproduct gas. So you want to make sure that you don't lock this down. If you lock this down, you could actually end up making the jar explode. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to take a rubber band and wrap it around there to hold it tight, but still loosely, uh, you know, hold it so it seals and won't let air in, but still it's loose enough that it, when the pressure builds up, it'll open and burp out the gas automatically. So now we're going to cut up the um, zucchini here. I'm just going to take off both ends. Give those to the chickens. And then we'll cut this into some spears. Now if the seeds were really big, I'd scoop them out and then um, proceed from there. And then I, of course, give those to the chickens as well. But since they're not, we're good to go but I do want to make sure that they'll fit in my jar so I'm actually going to use my jar as a measurement and actually I'll cut off the other end I'll use the jar as a measurement and then I can cut these to the length I need once they're cut to the length we need we can just cut them into the spears now as I'm cutting, my blade is tipped. I'm not cutting straight up and down. I'm cutting toward the center of the zucchini. So I am left with wedge-shaped pieces that will you know, fit back together to form the zucchini. So I'll just finish cutting that, and then we'll move on in the process. Each cut, you have to cut and change the angle that you're cutting in so they're all wedge shaped pieces. And then when you take them out, you can see they're different sizes. I'm gonna to try to even them up a little bit, like this one's super thick, so I'm gonna actually cut this a little thinner. And then this one is super thick, so I'm gonna cut that one a little bit thinner. Just trying to keep them all fairly evenly sized so that we can you know, have even penetration of everything. So for this one, I'll actually cut it in half, and then come in at an angle, and cut that angle, and then cut it, come in at an angle and cut that angle. So I have two cuts on that side, and then I'll turn and do two cuts on this side as well, and that should make these pieces a little bit more even. Let's get the scale out, and we're going to zero it out. And right now it's reading pounds and ounces. I don't want pounds and ounces, so I'm going to um, change the mode over to grams, because it's much easier to calculate this in grams than it is in pounds and ounces. Alright, so now we're reading grams. I'm going to put my jar on top here, and then I'm going to, what's called tear it out, T-A-R-E, tear the scale out, which just means set it back to zero. So now I'm reading zero, or one, that's close enough. And then I can drop these spears in. Once they're in there good and tight, I'm gonna add some dill. This is just some uh, baby dill that I picked up at the grocery store. And I'm gonna pack that in there too. Get it down in there. Then I'm going to add just probably a half teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And then 
again about a half teaspoon of um, black peppercorns. And now we need to add water, enough water in here that it covers everything up. Probably should have left a little bit more room at the top, but I'll jam them down once we're done. All right, so that leaves me about an inch of head space on the top of this jar. It's about an inch from being all the way full. Um, now I'm going to take this measurement. It's uh, 1,875 grams. Now I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.025, which will leave 2.5% of salt in this entire solution. So I know... If I multiply it by 0 0.025, that gets me 2.5%. And that's where I like to keep my um, lacto-ferments at about 2.5%. You can go a little higher, not much lower. You could probably go down to 2, but I prefer 2.5% because it's not overly salty, but it's still you know enough to keep it safe to eat. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take the water that's in here. So we have 1875. I'm going to dump this water out into a separate container and reserve it and then I'm going to weigh out the salt that we need and I'm dumping this out because that way I can warm this up and make it easier for the salt to completely dissolve when I warm that up um, I'll come back and I'll show you adding the salt to it get it to dissolve to dissolve now it's a good idea when you're doing this to keep track of your numbers um, at least momentarily so you don't forget what numbers you're working with so we have 1875 grams of the total mix with the water and the spices and the zucchini and everything and to that we need 0.025 um, to which is actually two and a half percent of salt and that works out to what uh 46 8 7 5 so we need 46 and 7 8 grams of salt and i mean we'll just round that up to we'll call it 50 grams and so i'll measure out 50 grams of salt um, now the salt needs to be non-iodized salt you can use pickling salt or kosher salt pickling just dissolves a little easier. So I'll use pickling salt today and we'll measure that out and add it to the water. All right, so let me measure the salt out. I should have used a bigger container, but we'll get there. All right, I'm a little over. I'm going to take some of that out because we already rounded up. And I don't like mine super salty. So, all right, we'll go with 50 grams of salt here. And then we have this water that's warm. And we're going to pour the salt into the water. And then we will stir that up nicely. All the way until all the salt dissolves. All right, took a, just a minute or two of stirring, but now that that's completely dissolved and the water's clear, not cloudy, now we can take our container, top it off with the salt water or brine, and that will allow the pickles to lacto ferment at the right salinity so they're safe to eat. Once they're covered with water, um, it's good to keep them, you know, completely covered. And sometimes, like you can see, this dill here is trying to float up. And we don't want stuff to be exposed to any air. So you can use some kind of weight. Some people have used different rocks that fit in there or whatever. Um, I'm going to use a glass weight that's made specifically for this and push that down. And then all that's left is to close it up and take a rubber band and um, wind it around and around and around so that the lid stays closed 
and keeps the seal here. Oops, that popped up. I'm going to have to wrap it a couple of more times. Anyway, you want to keep that seal closed so you don't let air in, but it allows it to be tight enough that it also will let the buildup of carbon dioxide in there out. So get this on here and we will be good to go. Now, it's a good idea to put this in some kind of container, like a stainless steel, preferably container, in case any bubbles over the top, and then stick it in a dark cupboard somewhere at room temperature. And we're gonna let this go for up to two weeks probably. I'm gonna check it after three days, cut off a little piece of the um, zucchini and see if it's, it's fermented all the way through. It'll get the sourness of pickles and stuff. Usually it's at least a week, depends on the temperature of your house a lot, but that's exactly how you make your lacto-fermented pickles. The rest is just a waiting game. I'm gonna use this stainless steel Revereware pan that I hardly ever use, and I'll put that in there to catch anything that happens to bubble over, and put it in the cupboard, and come back and check on it in a few days. Well, since I had some leftover zucchini, I didn't use the uh, both of the zucchini I cut up, there was some left. I'm going to do this in a quart jar as well. And I just wanted to show you that you don't have to use specific herbs and flavorings to do your pickles. Like I made those other ones dill pickles, but these ones I'm putting uh, garlic powder and some thyme leaves in. Um, I'm just eyeballing it. Now, I always like a little spice in my pickles, so I'm going to put some red pepper flakes in there as well. And then we'll just do the same thing. Fill it up with water. Take note of the weight, 680. And then do the same thing, 2.5% salt. Um, pour the water out, mix the salt with the water. And then we'll cap this and we'll have another bottle or another jar of pickles going. So we had 680 grams of um, liquid and vegetables. We'll multiply that by 0 0.025 and we get 17 grams of salt. I already mixed that with the water and put it in there. But I came back because I wanted to show you that when you're working with the um, with a canning jar, you can actually Get one of these lids and now these lids are they're soft like rubber i think they're actually silicone and they have let's see if it'll focus there a little split in the top and that split when when there's pressure on it the split opens so when that's got uh air buildup of the carbon dioxide inside it'll go like that and open up to let the gas out but it won't suck air back in so all you have to do to use those is put our ring on top, snug it up nice and tight, and now sit that in the cupboard alongside the other ones. Now we have um, zucchini thyme pickles and zucchini dill pickles.